Hi everybody. Caregivers and adults are asking about the legal aspects of caregiving in response to power of attorney documents. So in response, I welcome you to this webinar series called Power of Attorney, Proven Secrets for Success. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. From 2007 to 2018, I served as a professional fiduciary for individuals of all ages experiencing health concerns in the role of medical and financial power of attorney, court-appointed guardian, conservator, trustee, and the personal representative of the estate. This means that I served in the legal roles that you might find yourself serving in if you are a family caregiver or if you're an adult of any age and you're thinking about the steps or what's involved in appointing an agent under power of attorney, this initial video and this video series will help you understand all the steps and the powers that you give to another person who can help you with your medical or financial needs. Or if you are the person who accepts the responsibilities, this video and the videos in the series will help you understand what you can and can't do and what you should and shouldn't do. But let's do a caveat. But first, let me make it very clear. I am not an attorney, nor am I here to give you legal advice. If you want that type of information, consult an attorney specifically for this topic, elder law, estate planning, or probate. What I'm here to share is the real life experiences that happen when you appoint an agent under power of attorney, or when you accept the responsibility to be the agent under power of attorney for somebody else. And I'll tell you, most attorneys cannot talk to you about this. They draft the documents and more than likely you probably never see them again. I'm also here to translate legal terms and healthcare terms into simple language that almost anybody can understand so that all of this makes sense. So as I go through these videos, know that I refer to being a power of attorney as like an agent under power of attorney. I may call you a power of attorney. I may call you the agent. So different terms, but it all means the same thing. So stay tuned with me for this webinar as I explain why power of attorney is a whole lot more than you think it is. I'm going to look at four specific areas here for you to think about that I'm going to share in depth in videos. Now, no, this video is going to give you topics to think about. If you don't know anything about power of attorney, if you know some things about power of attorney, it's going to give you other things to think about. It's not necessarily going to provide you with all of the answers because those are going to come in future webinars. So if you want to learn the aspects of why you need a power of attorney, why you should think about it, what you should consider, what questions to start asking yourself, stay with me here. I also ask you to please click below to like this video, click below to follow my YouTube channel, and please comment below. Your comments allow other people who are looking for similar hope, help, and support to find these videos and to find my channel. You can also find more information about caregiving and aging and healthcare on my website at PamelaDWilson.com. So regardless of your age, whether you're 20 or 50 or 80, here you're going to learn about important aspects to start thinking about and questions to start asking yourself about power of attorney. Because the reality is anybody can write up a power of attorney document on a piece of paper, right? You can download it from the internet. You can have an attorney draft these documents for you. But what you don't know is the consequences of what those words on a piece of paper mean for your health and your money and your well being. And for the person you appoint, what rights are you giving away? What rights are you not giving away? If you're the agent, what can you do and what can't you do? Those are really important distinctions that honestly, most people do not understand. My life experience in this role is going to help you avoid a lot of unexpected situations and make sure that you are fully aware of the choices that you can make 
and will make. So here's how this webinar series is going to work, just so you know. There's going to be multiple videos, so be sure to check back here on my YouTube channel or on a page that I will have set up on my website. Once I'm through creating all the webinars, I will put links there and you can just go there and click through and watch all of them. So when thinking about power of attorney, you might be in one of these places, right? Four places. Maybe you want to appoint a power of attorney and complete your documents and get it done and you know everything that you want. If that's the case, I can promise you that these webinars are going to give you more to think about than you ever imagined. Or maybe you are an adult child and you're thinking, oh, I should help my aging parents create their documents and I want to do the same thing for myself while I'm thinking about all this. So I just want to get organized and know what I have to do. I'm going to give you the list. I'm going to give you the questions to ask. Or let's say that a family member has said, hey, will you be my un agent under medical or financial power of attorney? And you're thinking, well, do I say yes? Do I say no? What does that mean? What are my responsibilities? What exactly do I have to do? And more than likely, the person who wants to appoint you, they may not even be able to explain it to you because they don't know. This video will help out both of you. Or let's say that you're on the other end. You have already done your power of attorney documents and you're not happy with the person that you appointed because you're not sure they're doing a good job. Or maybe they're making decisions that you don't like and that you disagree with. That is still your right. Just because you have a power of attorney doesn't mean they can take over your life or spend your money the way that they want to or do things that you disagree with. So if that's where you are, what can you do? What are your rights? Can you fire them? I will tell you all of that. So let's go back to the original question. Why is appointing a power of attorney or becoming an agent under power of attorney so much more than you think? Why is it more than this simple project of just putting words down on a piece of paper. Have you ever acted as an agent under a medical power attorney for anybody? If you have, you may have some answers to these questions to the degree that you've done this, right? If you haven't, I'm going to explain some of the basics and questions that you want to think about. And you can write these down or you can come back and watch this video again. So a power of attorney in itself is a person, it's an agent that you appoint, but it's also this, this piece of paper, right? This document that you put words on. And all of the work really goes into figuring out what you want in that document so that it's worded correctly and that it's explained so that anybody reading it isn't debating, well, would they have wanted this? Would they have wanted that? I'm not really sure what they want here. You want to avoid with any doubt what your wishes are by putting them so clearly in a medical power of attorney, a financial power of attorney, a living will, and your will or trust. So the problem is it's this before creating the documents and the after that usually causes all the problems if you haven't thought about everything that might happen and thinking about everything that might happen is difficult if you've never been in this situation and like i said earlier even attorneys don't know what can happen if they haven't personally been in this role or in a very complicated care situation and i can tell you that in the 20 years that i've worked in the healthcare industry i have been in extremely complicated situations. There's almost anything that I have not had to figure out or decide or complicated issues or family disagreements. I've, I've navigated through all of that. So the planning stages are extremely important as are the implementation stages of when this document becomes in force and when you have advocates helping you make these decisions. Because as with these documents and creating these documents and navigating healthcare and health insurance and care communities and all of that, 
it's really what we don't know that becomes the challenge that we say, oh my gosh, I wish somebody would have told me about this, or I wish I would have known about this. So this is why you should care about learning about power of attorney, because it is so much more than that piece of paper. And for the agent, for the person that you appoint, it really does take somebody who has a little bit of medical background or is willing to learn, somebody who's good managing finances or is willing to learn, somebody who's been in this role even professionally like I have, who's had thousands of hours on the ground, so many experiences, good, bad, and otherwise, to be able to navigate this for you. Now know that the person that you appoint as an agent, if they don't have all of these skills, you actually give them the power to hire somebody so they can hire a consultant or a care manager or an attorney or a financial planner to help them with all of these decisions. But they need to know what questions to ask or what they should be looking for, or at least to say, gosh, I don't even know what questions I should be asking. Tell me what I need to know. Now, many people look at that question as like a threat or like a trap. It is not a trap. Asking somebody who has knowledge and experience to say, tell me what I should know. Tell me what I should be asking you. Tell me what problems happen so that I can avoid these unexpected consequences. Ask that question. It will serve you so well. So here's just three initial questions that we're going to go through in the webinars that follow here. So kind of like what we're talking about here. What should you know before choosing and appointing a power of attorney? What are the duties that you are assigning? If you are that person, what responsibilities are you accepting? And who really is a good person to appoint? So when you think about these, there's a lot of other questions that come into play and a lot of other actions that come into play. So it's important to have a conversation in your family about creating these documents with your spouse, with your children, who you're thinking about appointing, and what your wishes are so that it's very clear. And then again, all the things that can go wrong so you don't miss any of these things. And then to talk about what I call a care plan. So if you have health issues, what, what is it you want? How does that work? How does it progress? Financial, same thing. Do you have money to pay for care? Do you understand what the care costs are? What steps do you want to take there? So you're actually creating two plans when you do power of attorney, a medical plan that goes this way and a financial plan that goes that way. And everything comes together because the people that you appoint, if they're different people, should work together. You can appoint somebody in a family to do both. You can actually appoint people to oversee this. So if you're not sure if your family member is going to do a really good job, you can actually appoint an attorney or another person to kind of watch over and make sure that they're making good decisions, right? So then there's all these, what I call logistical components, right? The steps of, you know what you want, you've talked about it in your family, you know who you're going to appoint. You got to get the documents done, whether you use some online form, whether you have an attorney draft it for you. Then if you're going to have an attorney, you got to find a qualified attorney and just do not use a friend, do not use a family law attorney. Use somebody who knows what they're doing because the quality of your document is super important to make sure there's a lot of details in there to deal with the unexpected. And the more that you plan ahead, the more organized you can be when you go to that attorney. So it's definitely going to save you time and money. And then on the back end, you've got to implement this document. You need help from somebody. What do you want them to do? How do you have those conversations? If you're the agent, what can you do? What can you not do? I will tell you, you cannot take over another person's life. That is not what this means. You are appointed to do what that person states they would have wanted done. Even if now today they have Alzheimer's or dementia and they cannot make these decisions, right? So let's talk about expertise and skills related to this role, right? So when you think about, oh my gosh, who am I going to choose? Do I know anybody? Like, what if I pick the wrong person? What if this person says no? It's important to get the person that you appoint to agree 
You don't want to just do a document and then surprise, they need help and they get a phone call saying that you're in the hospital and you've appointed them as agent and they're like, I don't want to do this. I don't know how to do this. Then there's the idea of appointing like successors. So if this person says, no, I have a backup person. You talk to all these people up front. Now, caregivers, again, who've been a family caregiver from beginning to end may be very comfortable accepting these responsibilities or if they've done it for a friend. No big deal because they kind of know what's going to happen. They know how to work through it and, and they have done it before. But when you haven't done this before, there are a lot of unknowns. You know, healthcare used to be so simple, right? 100 years ago, people were born in the house, not in a hospital. 100 years ago, most people died in their homes. There were no hospitals. There were no hospices. Today, the hospital is the center of care. You go see doctors. Healthcare systems are now pushing more care into the home, which means family members have more responsibility and they are more involved. There's so many technological changes and medical advances and trying to keep up with all this and, and knowing how to make the right decisions again as we talk can be challenging. So this means that what I say is, there's the devil is in the details, right? The details of your documents, understanding the details and the consequences of your decisions are all extremely, extremely important. Because when health problems begin, and honestly, they can begin at any time, if you have friends or family members, how many people do you know who were fine yesterday and today they're in the hospital or they were in a car accident or they fell or they got a diagnosis of high blood pressure or dementia or cancer or some other diagnosis, right? Life changes in the blink of an eye which is why it's important to have these documents years before you think you're going to need them. Now, this is not to say that you cannot complete them at the last minute. I have plenty of clients where I showed up at the hospital or at a nursing home and we completed power of attorney documents right then and there because they needed help from a decision maker, right? So, so you can really complete these at any point, preferably before you have dementia or Alzheimer's and you cannot legally complete them talk about that in a future webinar. But the earlier you do this, the less emotional you can be about these decisions and the more detailed you can be. So there's a lot of benefit to that, right? There's a benefit to taking these preventative steps and these proactive steps and these actions because you can plan better and have better results at the time of need. So when choosing a power of attorney agent, medical financial, it's really important to understand their responsibilities, what decisions you want them to make, what decisions you don't want them to make, what decisions you want them to ask you about before they make. And then knowing again, like I said, the their abilities, right? Do they know anything about medical care? Do they even care? Do they know anything about managing money? Because I can tell you that appointing somebody in your family or a friend may not be your best choice. And if you don't have any family that you trust or any friends that you trust, you may need to seek out a professional. So I will in future webinars explain how to do that because I used to serve as that professional for many individuals because they either didn't have anybody that they trust or they wanted somebody who had expertise in doing all of these things and making all of these decisions. Because I can tell you a lot of family members accept these responsibilities and they have no idea what they're supposed to do. Power of attorney can be a full-time job. It's a lot of responsibility. And it's helpful to have a lot of organizational and critical thinking skills and decision-making skills because, let's face it, this is life and death. This is about money. This is about the well-being of the person that you are appointed the agent for. Or if you're the person appointing somebody, you have to trust this person to make the right decisions for you if you're in the hospital and you don't feel well and you're not up to thinking about it that day. You have to trust them with your life. So in this webinar series, again, in future webinars, we're going to talk about all this, the skills, who to appoint, everything. We're going to talk about family complications because let's face it, not all families get along. You may appoint your son to be power of attorney and your daughter may disagree or you may appoint somebody outside of the family and your children may be throwing a fit about that because they think that they should be the ones who are appointed. Well, maybe not in all cases. 
there are so many family complications that arise, especially if there's disagreement. So we're going to talk about how do you manage these complications when there's disagreement or family members are even abusing their powers. So if this topic is at hand, it's start, time to start asking yourself all these questions. Have serious conversations with your spouse, with your family. What are your wishes? Really, honestly, on the medical side, how much care do you want? What life-saving measures do you want? And do you even understand what those life-saving measures are, what they look like in the real world? And this relates to creating that living will or a do not resuscitate document. Do you understand all the things that can go wrong and everything that that means for your care? So this idea of having the legal documents and a care plan, which is the next step, is crucial because it's information for your agent and you to have at your fingertips. If something happens and somebody needs to know who your primary care doctor is or who your specialist is or what medications you're taking or your health diagnosis or what you want and do not want, this additional document that I'm going to take you through that you can create is going to make that so much easier. It's going to eliminate all of the guesswork as long as you create it and keep it updated. Okay. So again, a lot of steps, a lot of discussions to have before you even get to attorney to draft these documents and work through everything. So I invite you to check back here in a few days for the next webinar in this series, where we'll go into a lot more detail about what it takes to create a power of attorney document. I thank you all for being here again. Click the link on this video to like it, follow my channel, please comment below. It's the only way that other people who are looking for similar hope, help, and support are going to find these videos. It's the only way they're going to find these channels. So please help other people looking for hope, help, and support. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I am a caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker who has served as a professional fiduciary, and I'm able to share with you the real life situations that so many people can't even imagine happen so that you can be prepared and make the best decisions for you and your family. Thanks again for being here. I will see you all again soon in another video.